This is a very cool knife. A G5 Metamorph. It, very cool. There is one big negative I'm going to say right now. We're going to just bust out the gate with this. So brace yourself for a mini rant. Because I do not like this about this knife. Do you know where I'm going? That's right. It's a front flipper. Now, let's back up a little bit. I, I'm, not, I'm not closed off to innovation in knives. Not closed off to innovation in watches, guns, whatever type of gear you want, but I'm really, really dedicated to first cool. In other words, practicality. And so when we look at the G5 Metamorph, you will notice the absence of any thumb studs, any back flipper, and what you have is an extended portion of the blade here, which is, you guessed it, called the front flipper. Now for sure it will have advocates. Nah, here's my rant though. I think it's just trying to out cutesy itself that maybe real steel or whoever or whatever the original concept of this knife was i don't know don't really care it's just a little bit too cutesy i'll just stick with that word now for sure you can deploy it okay and it really is the only bad thing about this knife and that's why i've chosen to purchase it i'm going to keep it as a cast member as i freshen up the blades in the knife show which i think i've been doing a pretty good job of Keep watching the KRVs. You'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It works okay. You see, I screwed it up right there. I've And this is how I'm doing it. So I just take my thumb right here, a little bit of wrist action, but it's easy to screw up. And anybody who says otherwise is not being honest. Well, your technique sucks. Well, should you have, have to have a special technique to deploy a knife? If you say that, then you prove my point exactly. Because I say you don't. You shouldn't have to have a a special technique to deploy a knife. It should be so simple and so foolproof and so nut and fancy proof that even I can deploy it readily. Sure, it can happen, but it's you got to get used to it. And I'm just doing this this deployment right here. Oh, that's another thing too. So see if my my fatness is in the way right here, just like then, now I've got an occlusion. That's a problem. So you kind of got to do a pinch hold and guys will say, well, you're just not holding it. You just got to pinch and out comes the, the, the excuses, and that's what they are. I, I don't like front flippers. I freaking hate them. I've, I've determined I just don't like them. Now, you can deploy it like this, pinch it really tight, come out like that. I think probably the best way is a shake deployment like that. So pop it out. Don't even mess around with the tab and just shake it out. So the retention of this knife is good. Let me see if I, see, I always call off camera when I shake it because I need some distance and I've cut my tablecloth up before. So I just got to pop it up. That might be the best way. And yes, just like anything, if you practice with it, you can get good at it. But it's just too cutesy. You know, front flipper. I, I don't dig it. Now, some guys say, yeah, but if you have a front flipper, then you don't have an extended tab on the spine of the knife. And so it's just such a cleaner presentation. I get all that. I really do. I, I understand what you're saying, but I've never thought that bugs me that much. Here we go with, what's this knife right here? And it's a flipper design. It's an artisan cutlery $50 shark. Oh man, this is a cool knife. I'm going to review it separately. Talk, talking about freshening up the cast. There you go. So this is just a standard flipper design. Look at how easy that is. Just super, oh. You know, it's so easy. Oh, and I, I screwed up. It's not in the open position. I'm talking closed position when the tab's extended. That's what I should have said. So some people don't like this flipper tabs up here. I don't, again, see a problem with it. Whoa, that comes out nice. Really nice. And then they say, well, you know, they have a tab down here and it's, it's what, a finger guard? I like that. So this is a heavier knife for sure. It's kind of a little different construction, a lot different really. This Artisan Cutlery Shark, I absolutely love it, but it's a good representation of a well done flipper design. Incidentally, both of these representing very high quality Chinese knife production with no middleman. Yeah, no middleman. So a lot of your Spydercos and Kershaws and other major knife manufacturers that you guys love, guess where they're made? Taiwan, China. I think the Chinese have figured out, hey, we can just market them direct. We don't have to go through any major knife maker and we'll come out with our own designs just like these two manufacturers have. 
real steel artisan cutlery. Hey, and you are the benefactor from it because you're getting some really great blades for what I think are more than reasonable prices. Am I done with that rant on the deployment? Mm, yeah, I'm done. You guys get it. it. It is an annoyance to me on the real steel metamorph, but everything else in this knife is so awesome, I am willing to overlook it. Did you hear that part? So we came out the gate with a negative thing of this knife, and some may think it's awesome. They may say, hey, front flippers do it for me. Mm, I think they're kidding themselves. I think they'll run a front flipper for about five years and they'll go back to something normal with thumb studs, maybe assisted opening, flipper tab. But okay, you got it. Uh, I'll, I'll go with that. But everything else on this knife is awesome. For instance, the weight on the G5 Metamorph is only, get this, 2.6 ounces. Oh my gosh, is that a very, very light weight for a knife of this size. And more and more, really, this is a Moto Patch, not fancybigcartel.com. I think we're out of those, by the way. Sorry. <laughs> I tell you guys, get the patches and stickers while they're still around because they sell out. There you go. I'm just, and we don't, we're not about merchandising here, not too much, once in a while. But let's clear the table so we can take a look at the knife. Yeah, I'm. what I was going to say is I like more and more a slender presentation on an EDC knife. I just do. I'm going to show you some other competitive options that go along these lines. The reason I do, and I've said this in tabletop reviews, this actual concept is not new in my knife show. You just get so much more work done with a slender blade, whether it's a penetrating cut into a package. I mean, a realistic EDC task that you would do with your blade for sure. Getting out a splinter, which by the way, I've been getting a ton of this summer. I don't know what's going on. There's one right here. It's all healed up mostly. And I had to dig that out. I mean, God, it just went deep. That presentation is better. Don't get me wrong. I still love the spider coast. I totally do like the tenacious blades, but like I said, more and more, I like a slender blade for EDC. Let's take a look at this one and the grind of it. It's kind of a high flat grind on the metamorph. Steel choice is 14 C 28 N, which I think is a decent choice. The edge is really excellent. Let's prove it though. Sometimes I have been wrong thinking that it's excellent and then we do the paper cut test and it's not so excellent. No, it's pretty good. I could, I could definitely make it sharper. G5, see it's there kind of shredding right there. I probably have to work on it. I, I said excellent, maybe we'll downgrade that to a good. It's good. I mean, I like wicked, wicked, scary, stupid, sharp blades. But if you just do this test, don't do this at home, children. It's uh, It feels deadly. The knife edge does. Looking at the grind, kind of that funky swedge on the top. I really like that. The blade finishing is really, really good on the real steel metamorph. It's really perfect. That satin brushed finishing. We have perfect jimping at the top. No thumb ramp because that's just not the design of this knife. Again, though, I don't know if you'll care. You know, it's just the blade shape is super cool. Just enough belly. Again, super sharp tip. I love the blade shape on it. It is so excellent. Now the lockup. See, I just did it again. So here I'm pushing it. And I cleared this, but this part of my hand was in the way. So... Well, get it right, nothing fancy. Use some coordination. It's not that hard. I know. Yeah. I'm not going to go back to the rant. You know how I feel about it. The, the lockup is actually pretty good. Got about a 50%, 50, 50% timing factor on this with a very thin, I think, 420 stainless steel captured liner on the anodized aluminum handle set. And you can see, thankfully, that, let me get my light out here, the liner lock side is totally milled out. Look at that. Can you see that? I think you can. And then on the other side, too. So it has steel liners, but there's heavy, heavy milling going on here. See it right there? You know, if I didn't know better, I would think this would be a pure aluminum handle set with no nested liners at all. 
but that's not true. There are some in there. Again, captured liner lock, which I actually love that because I don't have to worry about, you know, overstressing like a frame lock if it doesn't have, uh, you know, something that prevents over travel. Oh, check this out, dude. Blood in the review. What I tell you? So that was when I just tried to flip it out like this. And I went like that on camera and that tip came up and nicked me right there. <gasps> this is someone call a paramedic weak from blood loss. <sighs> I'm just messing around. Yeah, you'll cut yourself with a knife for sure. Not tenacious bad though, dude, that was horrible. Go check out that video. One of my top viewed videos, the tenacious cut video. That is so hilarious. Lockup on the Metamorph is solid. That being said, with this thin liner lock, albeit being captured, I wouldn't put this knife in heavy use. This is basically, if we talk philosophy of use, it's either a collectible, which I think a lot of guys would just collect it and love playing with their G5, or they're just going to put it in light everyday carry. There's your stop pin right there. And I'm trying to think if this has ball bearings. I don't think it does. Yeah, it does. I'm sorry. I was looking at my notes. It is a roller bearing deployment system here. I'm not sure if they're captured or not, but it is roller bearings. Here, see, I'm just the whole time. Now I'm like going, ah, when I put this out, you know, make sure you get clear of the blades so you don't draw blood again. Well, just, you know, deploy it like that. Nothing fancy. I know, but I was doing that when I was practicing with it. And the problem with that is you can actually, well, like that, it doesn't lock all the way, or you can actually lose traction of it and it'll flip out of your hand. That's one thing. And then another thing is now you pull it out of your pocket and you've got to rotate the knife to deploy it. And I, I hate that. It's just, I, I mean, I'm an auto deployment guy. Totally am an auto deployment guy. So it's going to have a zip tie from a Spyderco or my knife. Now, listen for it, listen, listen. Freaking bench made, bro. Oh, nice. What was I cutting earlier with this? Lemons, that's what's on there, lemons. Mm-hmm, but here you go. So it's waivable. Once you get used to that, and then you have to fool around and do a multi-step process to deploy your, your blade, you may say you love it, but here's a reality che check. I was almost gonna say a reality chick. That'd be pretty funny, actually. Here's a reality chick from me to you. That's right, I went back to chick. Uh, you'll stop carrying it. You will. I know guys who say, oh yeah, man, I love that knife. I love this gun. I'm like, well, why aren't you carrying it? And then we start getting real with each other. And they go, well, there's something I don't like about it. So I stopped carrying it. Okay, getting real. Oh yeah, I went back to that rant again. See, I keep doing it. I think, yeah, I'm getting more reliable deployment on that method, or like I said, the shakeout. Real steel metamorph. All right, so we talked about the speed. Uh, I guess I covered that with my rant. The lockup, the jimping. Now we'll take a close look at the handle. Are there hot spots? Kind of, sort of. I mean, it is milled, so it's angled right here, chamfered, if you will. It has really nice milling on, I think, a 6000 series aluminum handle set. And you'll notice it's pretty slick. That's why I put a section of skateboard tape on there. And that's not for deploying the knife, that's for getting it out of the pocket. The Real Steel G5 Metamorph. That's why. Now, I did say it's an EDC knife for sure. But also you could use it as a Kubaton like that, as a non-lethal impact tool, if you wanted. We do have a lanyard attachment pin right here, going through the aft portion of the ham handle. And an aluminum backspacer right here. All that's good. The clip is okay. I don't mind it. And in this design, it's probably best we don't go super deep carry because Otherwise, you'd have a hard time getting it out of the pocket. You're stuck with tip up. Thankfully, it is tip up, but you're stuck with this side. Still think it's a decent lefty knife, though, because of the deployment system. And there's your centering right there, which is pretty sick. Really cool looking knife. Which color would you prefer? Nothing fancy. There I go again, screwing it up. 
Uh, I like the blue. The blue is probably my favorite, but by a very small margin. Second place would be the rose coloration of the Metamorph. I really love that color. And then third, strangely, would be the G, uh, G5 in gray. I was going to go strangely because usually I really, really love gray. But I have that a lot in different blades, and so it's nice to colorize um, the cast members, if you will. So, cool knife. We'll get to some competitive options here in just a second, but now I'll answer the question, would I buy it? Uh, yeah, I would. That may surprise you because I ranted so heavily on the deployment. Uh, yeah, it is it is what it is. I'm not going to go back to that. But like I said, everything else is amazing. Amazing. Now, I have heard rumors, by the way, a G5 handled version is possible, and it might be out there already and some other variations. I don't know. I'm just reviewing this aluminum handle set for now. But at the same time, this one is insane. Even with its big deployment front flip and quirk, I would recommend it. And that takes us to competitive options, especially around 60 bucks, dudes. Totally worth it. I'll put links below if I can find them, use them. They support the, the show and it allows me to get some money to go eat a hamburger once in a while. How about the freaking collaboration between Brad Zinker and Boker Plus? This is the Urban Trapper. Oh man, that is a sick knife! Reviewed separately. In fact, I showed the $625 version of this knife in that KRV. Go check that out, bro. Oh yeah, I love that Tanto version in this knife. I don't I don't know why, I just do. And I told you in that review, and you really have a hard time telling the collaboration, this one, this is a mass produced Boker Plus in VG10, I believe that's the steel they're using, yep, of the Urban Trapper versus a Custom. You, you really have to like, oh, was that the Custom, that the Boker? You know, you can see the blade laser engraving for sure. Which one between these two would I prefer? This one. I would buy this one over the G5 Metamorph. Is it because of the deployment? Yeah, it is. Totally is. That's why I I just like it better. Even with the handles, I, I just love this is like 1.8 ounces. You can see the blade length on the Urban Trapper by Boker Plus about the same length. This also comes in different handle, I'm sorry, different blade configurations like the Boker FR version has a kind of a drop point if I'm remembering right and there's all types of different variations on the Boker plus Brad Zinker collaborations they are all great you can't go wrong the only thing I would say is I would prefer the 14 C 28 in steel over the VG 10 that's that's where I'm at now how about the oh god I love this knife the Mkusta Katana did you guys forget about that knife oh that's a sick blade kind of a modified Tanto this is a layered Damascus VG10 reviewed like oh, a long time ago, like seven years ago. Look at the handle. Again, we'll look at the Mkusa Katana. These are very hard to find. I know a lot of TMPers bought them. I've talked to you guys online. I've met a couple guys who are actually EDC in their Mkusa Katanas. Very cool knife. It's really in a different world as far as the thickness of the handle set. I forgot to mention that on the Metamorph, it is really a thin handle set, it's super easy carry. That with the slim handle presentation, it, it really is a knife you forget you have. So as a pairing with a tactical blade, the G5 is ideal if you can get past the front flipper deployment, um, I, but it's super easy to carry. Now this is a tip down carry and you cannot change it in this knife unless you do some modifications yourself. Again, hard to find, but the M Kusa Katana kind of reminds me of, of a blend of these two blades. So it's got that really cool look to it. And I have an orange version. This is the blue, the kind of the sky blue anodized version. Seiki City, Japan construction. Uh, can you go wrong? Nope, you can't. And then the other one that I have here, which is kind of the same long form blade presentation that these two knives have. This one a little bit less is the Benchmade Nagara 10700, discontinued, I believe, in 9CR13 MOV. So this is, look at this, production 737 out of 1000 was this one. Look at that handle. So that's an aluminum, I think it's aluminum, not titanium. It could have been titanium. But the price we paid on this, I have an info sticker on. Hmm, I got smart, 
with a label maker. We bought it in 09, 60 bucks, 3.6 ounces, and it's got the knack lock. I think that's what they call this locking mechanism. It's not super strong, I don't think. Look at how easy that is to take out. Oh, dude. So this is, again, what I'm talking about. So we looked at the flipper design of the Urban Trapper. Now on the Nagara, it's, you know, simple tab. I, it's, it's preferred. No apologies. Some, oh, the front flipper's awesome. It is the future of the knife industry. It is not. You, you come back to this video, you will see that very few knives will get traction as a front flipper. And once people get out there and use it a lot, they're going to go, yeah, I'm not, I don't want this knife. It says me. If I'm wrong, I'll say so in future reviews. And then I already showed you the Artisan Cutlery Shark. This one's in orange. Sick. Flipper design. VG10 on this too, I think. No, D2, sorry. Oh, that's cool. This is a mass drop version right here, bros. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Really a nice knife. And the deployment on this knife is just buttery smooth. Captured ball bearings on that one, I believe. Uh, so there's some competitive options. Hmm. But out of all the knives on the table, which one would you buy? You have to choose one, nothing fancy. Oh, I don't know if I can answer that, ladies and gentlemen. That's just crazy talk right there. That is crazy. It's like trying to choose your favorite child. It's insane. But if I was pressed, um, first off, you really have to nail down what are you using it for. For just EDC tasks? Hmm. I would choose the Boker Plus Urban Trapper. There you go. Because it's lightweight, has a long long, uh, long blade. I deal with a tanto grinder and resharpening. That's where I'd sit. A close second for just super light EDC would probably be the G5, even with a front flipper. Because this is 3.6 ounces. You guys know I'm insane for weight when it comes to the secondary knife. Because the way I carry is this is pairing with a tactical blade. It's not my only knife. I want to make that clear. So when I answer that question, that's how I'm thinking. I'm like, okay, I need something super light. And if that's the question, then that's how I'd answer. Uh, G5 Metamorph is still a very cool blade though. Very cool. If you can get past the deployment, the looks are insane. The jimping's excellent. The clip is good. It's by the way, a two screw clip. Forgot to mention that. Standard Torx adjustment single side which makes it easier perfect blade shape it's such a cool blade it is recommended uh, and i'm going to give it a very fair rating despite deployment so check out my likability and all the links below join patreon keep the thing flowing that is a video flow see ya